We're back with more Sisters of Battle. Spiky Bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and today we are taking a closer look at the new Sisters of Battle Seraphim Squad. Now, eh, this is a quite a new release, but right now there isn't a whole lot of new releases out there, so I thought it'd be cool to kind of go back and take a look at some of the stuff that all came out at the same time, and now we can have the time to kind of get in there and show you a little bit more about the models. Now, the Seraphim Squad is priced at $55 US, which is pretty much in line with our pricing expectations, you know, based off of things we've seen in the past with Primaris uh, five-man squads, you know, uh, 50 mil three-man base uh, units being $50, $55, and then also primarily on the Havoc, the Chaos Havoc pricing. Um, fortunately, you get all of the bits in here to make both the Seraphim and the Xeraphim, I guess they're called. I'm kind of curious on how they do all these little fancy, these are probably just like uh, topper bits up here for their... Uh, their Seraphim jump packs, but, um, and it looks like they have some different head options too. These are the more the close combat version and the other ones are the, the kind of close in shooty shooty version. So I'm sure there's some sharing of bits in here, but um, as far as that goes, I'm not exactly sure because uh, we need to take a closer look at the sprues here. Now remember, you can always get your hobbies for less uh, from Miniature Market or Dicehead.com. Now, obviously in the current world situation some stuff might be out of stock they might not be shipping they might be shipping now they might not be shipping next week so you know um it's gonna be a little bit harder to source your your hobby needs these days but uh, you know i'm sure with a little effort you can uh, probably find what you need somewhere um if not if you end up on amazon too well, they seem to have a lot of stuff as well. Here's the breakdown of the contents of the box. So you're gonna get two sprues, they're not identical, which is nice. Some bases and six flying stands right here. You only need five, so you kind of fielder's choice on uh, which sizes you wanna go with. There's some smaller ones and some larger ones. It kind of varies. Um, I've magnetized those, and I think we did a video on how to, oh yeah, with the aggressors too. So uh, maybe look that up or I'll link it in the channel, you know, somewhere around in the description or in the cards or something like that, because we've done a tutorial on how to magnetize those stands. And uh, in theory, it would work on here because these seem to be just about as chunky as the, um, uh, aggre or not the aggressors, the suppressors. Everything starts sounding the same. We did aggressors too, but that's a completely different thing. Uh, and the instruction manual. So let's take a closer look at the sprues themselves. But I do want to flip through the instruction manual. Oh, and a decal sheet too. Yay! I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of using those on uh, small infantry size models personally. Now, as far as construction of the models go, um, very similar to what we've seen on the infantry, the normal uh, ground pounding infantry. So you got a front and back kind of clamshell you've got this additional um tabard up here it seems like all the multi-part sisters are their capes are flowing in the wind and the ones that came um maybe the etb ones if you want to call them that um those that came in the starter army those are kind of uh i don't want to say uh single pose i don't want to say dull but they're definitely not as dynamic as these sisters here and you can see why when they start doing all these uh, different kind of clamshell patterns of like the robes and different things and then when it comes to weapons the seraphim I mean obviously the the superior is gonna have her choice of all different things but you can see with these other ones uh, you're gonna have choice of the flamers choice of the bolters here um I guess they, yeah that's right they don't get plasma they do get the uh, the inferno right there so and you're gonna have two different sets of heads to choose from as well now, I imagine one of these arms is going to get swapped out when it comes to the Xeraphim, but let's uh, kind of fast forward to that. And that looks like, yep, there's two different heads right there. So there's going to be a lot of different heads, and they have some extra bits and accessories and things uh, to kind of slap on them there at the end. I, I really like that look of the, the hooded one, but I'm more, I feel like if you're flying around in the air, you probably want to have a helmet on. But that's just me. Uh, that's my personal preference. Now, jumping into the Seraphim, or the Xeraphim rather. Uh, the Sister Superior is, those look like the same exact bits I just showed you. Those, that's the same. I guess you can have this uh, standard thing. And that's the same. I want to say 59 and 57 was the same right there. So it might be that she's actually the same, 59 and 57. She is actually the same. But when it comes to, oh, and there's uh, extra little bits and stuff you can put on her. But when it comes to these over here, you've got uh, D that comes with bolter 57 oh or you can make her as d number 57 so i guess the first new one would be a because it's the same 
bolter pistol, so you couldn't use that twice. And they give you no other option right there. 47, 40, huh, different front, same back. Okay, so that's just a variant. So there's six different ones to that you could possibly create here. So let's look at A. So A has a uh, bolter nine and power sword 12. Bolter nine and power sword 12. So that's duplicating the right arm and then the left arm looks to have the close combat weapon. So, so, so these are gonna be very similar, but then they have the different heads. So there's a lot of heads in here for sure. And are these different jetpacks? That's crazy that they did different jetpacks. No way. Did they? ZFMA, ZFMA, part 13, part 14. Wow. They give you extra jetpacks that are all one piece. That's kind of cool. That gives you actually a lot of different opportunities maybe to slap those on. Well, I guess your sisters, you'd have to do them on superiors. But that's interesting they give you those extra bits. Very, very interesting. So what I'm curious about is if we can use the standard 1 8 inch magnet right here uh, to attach that to the uh, the base or the, the model up here so you don't have... Um, I'm actually going to grab those when we build them. I'm going to grab my suppressors and kind of show you what we did there. I don't think I'm going to have time today to actually do this, but we're going to try to fit the magnet up in there just to find out for ourselves if it would work. So let's take a look at the spruce. So here's the first sprue, and it does look indeed like there is a butt ton of jump packs in here. So that's really cool to see. Uh, $55 for five models. I mean, obviously, you can do the math on that real quick. That's $11 a model, which, you know, for plastic, uh, we've, we've definitely seen it increase over the years. So it's kind of nice when you see things like this. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying I like to see more value in my kits, uh, and that definitely seems to be more value to me I'm sure folks have a, a different opinion of it as we as we heard when we break down some of the bigger boxes but I like to see that sort of thing and there's definitely all sorts of different arms and things as I showed you so you're gonna have your Xerofilm arms which are mostly close combat so you're gonna basically have a duplicated arm so at the very least you're gonna have at least three sets of arms if not more for the superior option and then this uh, this standard right here so I mean as far as um, detail and posing goes I mean you can see up here on the standard like that's pretty crazy detailed you don't even have to super worry about painting it. it's almost tracing it at that point the freehand evolved and then the brazier right here looks really good chain swords always looking fresh uh, all these extra icons that you can put on the backs and uh, I really like the jump packs like I've seen you know, I was around, I think I had some of the sisters that were pewter models on those little uh, mini flying stands, and those things didn't work too well. They fall over a lot. So it's nice to see these, although I'm curious how they're going to work on the, the flying stands right here. So as far as I can tell, these seem to be more dynamic and more poseable uh, than the squad that came in the army box. So here's two different Seraphim models. Uh, I'll give you two guesses mostly one of which one is the new multi-part kit and which one is out of the starter box <laughs> uh, the one in my left hand is the more uh, dynamic and multi-part version of the seraphim out of the new kit we just showed you and then this is one out of um, the army starter box that came out in November now I mean just looking at it they are both very dynamic um, so almost more so than comparing the infantry to each other I mean, the jetpacks look pretty much the same. Uh, you know, this has a lot of motion to it. Uh, it only could be built as Seraphim. So this, unfortunately, we built it as a uh, Seraphim as well. So we're not going to know what the Seraphim styling is. But then if you look at the chest, it's a little bit more detailed. There's grenades dangling off on the, the one on the left right there. And as far as the faces go, um, they're about identical as best I can tell right here, I think. So I'm kind of happy. I'm honestly happy with the quality of both of them, to be quite honest. Um, maybe the posability of the, the Seraphim kit will kind of uh, sell it um, in hobbyist eyes as, oh, hey, I need this so I can build both. Um, but to me, I feel like posing and quality wise are about the same. Yes, I know the, the barrels need to be drilled out. Now, this one was glued to the flying stand right here because there's uh, there was enough space right there that it felt like, I mean, she doesn't weigh a whole lot. So, I mean, if you have a room in your case, you could probably do that. Now, me personally, I like to paint uh, the flying stands. I don't like a whole lot of um, unpainted uh, details or components, I guess, pieces of my of my model. So I generally try to paint all those. Now, then I used a little blue tack here on this one when we built this. Actually, Tim built this uh, here at the studio. And... 
what I wanted to see was if we take the magnet from, it looks like there's plenty of room. So if you wanted to put a 1 8 inch magnet in there, you could. Um, now this, I supported the 1 8 inch magnet with a little Vallejo plastic putty around there because like I said, I'm gonna paint this stand. So I wasn't too worried about it. And then I coated uh, the bottom of the suppressor as well with a little bit of plastic putty around uh, the edges where it might have uh, kind of overlapped. So this actually uh, grabs really, really good. I mean, I'm just, just gravity's kind of swollen him around, but I mean, he's not falling off or anything. So you could do that with your Seraphim, but you know, Marines are a little bit more bulkier. I don't think you might need to do that, but if you do, you can definitely pick up some 1 8 inch magnets from uh, Magnet Baron. That's our Definitely one of the people we love to talk about. He has a ton of dope ass products over there and really all you need is magnets You don't need you know, any fancy redo of the flying stand or anything like that if if you just don't want to glue them on the stand I think that is actually pretty reasonable um, I think it'll hold the weight just obviously don't drop your miniatures because that's uh, probably never a good thing right there So overall, I think uh, I think the new kits probably a win just because of the components in it but if you're looking to save a little hobby dollars then um, maybe you just want to go with the ones from the army box if you can find them separately somewhere or still can uh, scoop up the army boxes right there and there's a sizing compared to a uh, suppressor from uh, the shadow spear or the new vanguard start collecting box got some ex extra bits on there from my iron wares from pop goes the monkey so he hooked me up with a whole bunch of different bits to uh well, continue on the Iron Warriors tradition going on into the age of Primaris, I suppose. So that is it for this one. Make sure you check out Miniature Market or Dicehead Games so you can always get your hobbies for less at Dicehead.com. And if not, uh, well, it's going to be a little bit harder to find things for a few months probably. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.